Okay, so the installation is finished, as you can see. So let's go ahead and reboot the machine. That's all you need to... Oh, wait, I forgot. Ah, uh, never mind. We shall simply reboot it twice. Well, if, if you're wondering what I forgot, I forgot to enable the default boot of GUI. But, oh well. I think it should be a big deal. We can always manually switch over to GUI, but I'm just gonna... Uh, perhaps... <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing to actually to actually change it and I realized in between these two courses that in it is no longer being utilized what that is never mind uh, so let's go ahead and I'll log in as admin and I'm gonna go ahead and create this link dash sf slash slash system uh, system d because I'm notorious for misspelling these things run, run level 5 of course so target and we're gonna do this slash etc slash system d slash system slash default if you're wondering what we're doing now we're basically creating a link right. in order for us to be able to boot Ellen cannot remove permission denied of course we have a permission denied I don't have mouse integration here ah oh, such a wonderful feeling Let's retype it, no big deal. Unfortunately, I can, actually, fortunately, I can actually use uh, I can use my tab to complete at least some things. I get slash. Let's see, system D system default target go for it reboot okay it should boot back to, should boot should boot to the GUI boot now I am begging you come on uh -huh. maybe it will maybe it won't who knows it is a mystery after all let's see Today, my good man, today. And preferably the way I want it. Seems like it. Uh, there we go. Almost there. Are we gonna see the black screen? Or are we going to see the something else screen? That is the question. There we go. So it does boot into GUI, standard GNOME. So let's just go ahead and log in. Now that we have our admin machine, we can pretty much uh, leave everything else as we can, as we will be able to control stuff from here. As I've just shown you with SSH, the server will simply be running in the background. We won't bother much with it directly. Rather, instead, we will use SSH. So let's go ahead and do. Uh, well, let's go through the setup first. Pretty simple. Uh, no, I don't want to connect any any anything else. Uh, devices insert guest editions too soon. I guess I needed to install. No, 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 cancel. And is it just me or are these terminal colors dreadful when you have black and white? This white is absolutely killing you. So let's. I'm gonna go ahead and change that. Profiles. I would like to edit this one. Block. Uh, title and command. Colors. Built in color scheme. Green on black. Well, that seems doable. 
Sure, let's leave green on black. That gives us a very good contrast. Okay, so now we're gonna need to do yum install dkms and the Ubuntu machine is going black. Of course, I need to be root yum install dkms. Mm, something is keeping it busy. Probably the 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 update in the background. So I can either wait for it to finish or kill it. Well, this is not the actual update, this is the check for the updates. So another copy is running as PID 3255. 3255 shall die now and I will... Have I not just killed you? No package DKMS available. Okay, let's see if we can manage this without it. So CD uh, Where do you suppose this is mounted? DF H to see the mounted file systems. Okay, so it's run media admin. CD slash run media by the way the the DF space dash H command gives you the ability to see the currently mounted file systems your currently mounted devices and where exactly is it that they are mounted. So admin, virtual box, guest editions, let's give let's get a listing here. And let's go ahead and run this VBox Linux editions run. Let's see how this works out. Okay, building the main guest module failed. Uh, but installing graphics libraries and desktop component. Installing XOR modules, success, Windows system drivers. That seem that that all seems to have went well. So let's just go ahead and reboot the machine and see if we actually got the functionality that we wanted to get, and that is the full screen mode. I really uh, do need a full screen mode to work because I'm not working on some tiny terminal with some tiny letters that is like. That is pretty much equivalent of a suicide to me. I'm just gonna like not do that. And we have to wait up for we have to wait for the boot. By the way, the difference in time when I'm doing these two tutorials is like three o'clock in the morning and twelve o'clock in the noon. <laughs> so uh, quite a difference there in two diff two very, very, very different moods. Okay, so this is booting. There we go. Let's go ahead and type in test. By the way, that is the password that I've used across all three of these different machines, pretty much. Uh, I would advise you not to do it yourselves because you'll probably have these machines running for longer than me because I pretty much will erase them the moment I'm done with this tutorial. So in a couple of hours, they will pretty much be gone. By the time it's all published, it's no longer going to be here. Okay, so uh, we have full screen mode. We have a dreadful background, but I don't really care much for it. Just going to go ahead and open up one terminal here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up another terminal. We're just going to need two for the time being. Okay, there. There we go. Uh, so, yes, I need an increase. I need to zoom it in, and unfortunately, that is doing terrible things. But we can, we should be able to leave it like this. It should be just fine, no big deal. And now we're gonna, now we will need to connect basically back to our we will need to connect using SSH back to our server and then we will basically uh, begin configuring it we will configure we will base we will first configure the forwarding of 
uh, the network traffic and then we will configure the proxy server and then we will go into our client machine which is Ubuntu some office machine and we will configure it to basically connect to our proxy to go through our proxy server in order to get out onto the net uh, let's just see what was the password what was the IP address so one one four right Hopefully it hasn't changed because I haven't really shut my computer down or anything like that. So let's go ahead and type this in. SSH space creator at 192.168.1.4. Your IP addresses might be different, so please do check them with IP space ADDR command. Uh, yes. password excellent so we are successfully logged in and we can go ahead and switch over to root okay so we have ourselves established in one PC and now we're gonna need root permissions on our current PC here much this should be this should be the sweet spot so on our admin machine we will first need to install Wireshark let's go ahead and type in yum install Wireshark and this is gonna this is gonna take a while well I don't know how long will it take but I knew this was too big so we need to oh man this is way too big Okay, let's put it up like this. Let's put it up like this. And now you can see that the question is that it will install uh, Wireshark and it will install some dependencies. So yes, or you can just press Y here. You don't need to type in the full yes, just the reflex that remained, uh, just a reflex that remained from SSH, no big deal. Now, while this is running, uh, we can go ahead and say that we would like to open up another tab and yes please expand please expand so we don't have to wait for the installation to finish now we're gonna as in previous tutorials we will uh, configure the named pipe so what what we shall do is mk f i f o sp space slash t m p because that is the destination, and I'm just gonna name mine the way I have named it in the previous tutorials on Udemy. It's gonna be packet capture. Packet. Make sure you select a something simple, some sort of a simple name uh, that is readable and accessible. Packet capture and let's do ll slash tmp packet capture. So, what permissions do we have? The world needs to uh, the world. So it's read write for the for the owner of the file and for the group it's read write, but for the world it's just read. And we need to do ch mod. Uh, this should do the trick, but not sure. We'll check TMP uh, packet capture. No, this just this didn't give it to the world. Uh, CH mod. Let's go with six six six. Yep, there we go. Uh, I know, right? 666. <laughs> Weird permission set, but what can you really do about it? That's going to give me the world readable, the group, uh, the world readable and writable, the group readable and writable, and the owner readable and writable. Just the way it is, no hidden messages here. Uh, I, I really don't know why this that is so, but that's just how the numbers add up in order to basically create this set of permissions. Uh, let's go ahead and clear and now we need to go ahead now we now that we have created the named pipe 
Uh, now we need to go ahead and take a look at our Wireshark installation. That seems to be complete, no problems. Let's just test it out and see if it is running. Wireshark. It's not. At least tell me that T-Shark is running. Oops, T-Shark is running, but Wireshark seems to be... Uh, okay, no problems. Let's go into bin slash ls bin and then let's grab out Wireshark. We need dash i Wireshark center. Hmm, interesting. We don't really have it there. Let's do another. Yeah, we seem to have installed T Shark only and not Wireshark. T Shark is the command line tool and Wireshark is the uh, GUI. So yum search wire shark. Do you believe that we need a GDK or something like that? Uh, GNOME desktop integration for Wireshark network analyzer develop develop. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and take this one. Copy yum, install. Control Shift V to paste. Press enter. So it's a bit busy there. Yes. Go ahead and let's see how this is gonna work out. This should. Uh, the installation should be finished momentarily. Where shark? And there we go. So it is up and running. The program. We have our interfaces here, which we can listen on, which we can utilize, etc. So no problems there. I'm gonna go ahead and close this program for the time being, as I do not need it momentarily. Uh, the named pipe, sorry, the, where's the command? There we go. This named pipe that we have created, we will utilize it in order to monitor traffic because the traffic from a different machine from the server will be forwarded to this machine, which is our admin machine. And then that traffic will be placed here into this, into this pipe into this pipe file and then from here it will be taken by Wireshark and displayed for our eyes to see and devour. Okay, so uh, next up we need to go over to the server machine. As you remember in this terminal we are logged into the server machine and from here we need to go ahead and type in yum install. This is most likely installed by default. Uh, TCP dump uh, apparently not. Of course not, because this is a minimal install. Usually on the default install, it's always up and running. But that's one of the benefits of minimal install. You can basically install only the things that you need to install. And now we are going to go ahead and do something. Something interesting. A rather long one-liner that I have created for myself. Uh, but I first need to see the IP address, so IP ADDR. Uh, ENP zero S three ENP zero S three. Not the way it works. Never mind. I'm, I'm basically too lazy to go and reacquaint myself with IP ADDR because I've been using IF Config since for as long as I remember, even though it's a depreciated command. But people still keep on using it, and IPADDR really gives you a lot more info, but hey, oh well. So, uh, what is the IP address here, Inet? So it's 192.168.1.3. Okay, no big deal. That is uh, that is just the IP address that we needed. And now, we, we're, now we're gonna go ahead and type this long one-liner. I'm gonna go ahead and expand the screen a little bit so that it can hopefully fit. I purely doubt that it will, but hopefully it will. So remember, in this terminal, we are logged into the server. And now we're on the server, we're going to type in tcp dump-i for the interface. And unfortunately, my clock is telling me that I am pretty much out of time, so we will continue in the follow-up tutorial. <laughs>